That that is yeah. I, I can't like I can't argue with that thought process. That's where we're at now, Lidicor. Everybody outpost rushes. Even the ambassadors are doing it. If they can do summon, anyone can. Let's see if we're gonna get that unorthodox strategy out of B as we hop into game number two, where for a second B C and B are gonna grab the wrong Sears before going. This doesn't seem right for this game. Let's switch around. <laughs> Indeed, spawning in on the left side is going to be B playing as the French in blue, and right side it is going to be Beast QT in command of the Dallas Sultanat in the color red. Mm -hmm -hmm. And we are going to get one of those cheeky little stealth forest type dry rabies. I think I prefer these ones actually. I quite like it when there's a few little stealth forests. It's kind of amazing how much you can do with a tiny little blob of fog. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not much, but it's honest work. It also gives some nice aesthetics to the map. One of the things I always uh, mentioned when I was judging Drongo's map making contest is that there were some maps which had some very empty parts. And one thing that I brought up as a suggestion is that you can use Stealth Forests to get some more aesthetics to the map and in a way just reduce the emptiness of certain parts, even if it doesn't add any like strategic value in some cases. Some small Stealth Forests can be very nice to spice up the landscape. Got it. You're that type of person who's like, my painting is ugly. I know, I'll just add in a few happy little trees here and that should uh, that should hide the really ugly parts. I mean, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents, as we all know. I mean, there's happy accidents and then there's my sisters. Anyway, let's focus on the game because you know what? This is, this is an interesting thing, actually. We've got some weird sort of Megaton thing. Was it Megaton in Fallout 3, the town that's built in a bomb? We've got a weird ass crater here. This isn't Dry Arabia. This is, uh, uh, what's that place where the meteor dropped? I don't know. Like, uh, it, it's embarrassing because I actually played a lot of Fallout, but I'm missing out on it's that. Because they, it's, yeah, yeah, Megaton. Yeah, I was right. Because, like, uh, I, I was that troll that went into the city and accidentally set the bomb off and acted like I'd fixed it. And, uh,. <laughs> Well, that kind of tells you more about me as a player than it does you about the game. Anyway, let's focus on the correct game here because, of course, as the opener, we have to see if we're going to get any cheeky shenanigans, any sort of early mobilization, and it looks like that's not going to be the case. No attempt by an outpost rush on either side. And I really mean either side because I've actually seen French players <laughs> as well as Delhi players do outpost rushes, and I could see either of these players doing it. I've, I think I've seen Beastie do outpost rushes with the French before. And, I mean, it doesn't... Like, when you first think about it, it sounds crazy. But then you have to think about the fact that the French usually struggle against the Delhi Sultan in this matchup, unless they can buffer up the aggression of the Delhi for long, or they can keep them away from the sacred sites for so, so long. So, the French, you get the impression that they need to do something extraordinary to keep the Delhi at bay. Otherwise, they will have issues in that mid-late... Not even the mid-late part, but rather that intermediate period of the game. So, that transit... What is that landmark? Is that the Dome of Faith? No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. It's... Okay, okay, well, like, the foundation looked a little down. weird from that calm camera down. angle, and for a moment I got scared, but okay. We got Dome of Faith coming in here, so no Tower of Defeat today. Thankfully, I mean, Look, that would be a great way for if... Beast to get eliminated from this bracket. I'm pretty sure if Beastie had built a Tower of Victory, you'd see a tweet going up afterwards saying that this game is stupid and he's going to try him over instead. Um, you know, like that, 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 that's the type of mistake you make and you decide you don't want to play anymore. Oh, a little bit of harassment coming out. Awkward part for B here is he's the one now defending against this harassment when he should be the one doing this harassment. French benefit a lot from scout probing onto villager lines. Yes, the scholar can heal up, but if you do like two damage to a villager, most people won't use the scholar to heal that off. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think this is one of those matchups where both players benefit from harassing the enemy gold mine. Obviously, the French, they will just be able to harass the gold miners themselves uh, and delay potential scholars. Whereas on the Ooh. other side, you can potentially delay knights. But look at this. Not something that you for see every reason. day. Be moving out for the deer. Yeah, but for good reason. Look on the mini-map at where the deer icons are. This is a double stack of deer. B is very much encouraged to come out here, but risky to do this in a matchup against the Delhi. Yes, you are the French, and usually you get away with pocket economies, but Delhi and Dry Arabia, they are incredibly good at playing mid-map as well. Yeah, and the concern is that Beast is going to open up with Horsemen here, so even... Oh, what's that? Uh, Be Beastie's pushing the deer away. Oh, yeah. He's pushing the deer away to make it less optimal for B. Yeah, it's, it's a common nice trick that you can use if you're Beastie here. Uh, the more important thing is that Beastie is aware of that. So he knows what's up. He's going to put a lot of aggression towards this. And the key thing here is that 
he can defend back at home with Spearman, and usually we see early horsemen from the deli. So in like one or two minutes, you could see four or five horsemen heading towards those villagers that right now are completely undefended. Mm -hmm. In fact, look at this map. It's not the worst idea for BC to eventually wall his base in, if you look. You know, you've got these tree lines that complement you, and at least on the center and south side, like, walling that across isn't too much of a strenuous task at this point in the game, especially considering Spears can do it instead of villagers. Might be something he opts for, because then you don't have to defend your base. You can just go full aggressive. Speaking of full aggressive, here comes the first Royal Knight from B. One has to wonder whether Dextos has already been researched by Beastie. I don't think so. But even uh, without Dextos, it takes three taps right I, now for those knights to get the kills. That's definitely Dextos, yeah. He's Ooh, safe. Yeah. Nice and little move by Beastie. It's actually four shots to kill a villager from that situation. Remember that B has yet to get his hands on the blacksmith, so he doesn't have the melee tech upgrade. So he wouldn't be able to free tap them, even in textiles. So pretty good play right now. B, he should identify that there's textiles there and should immediately look to get a blacksmith. Otherwise, these knights really don't do much. Exactly. Um, like, that's one of the big things here, that even without textiles, it would take three taps for a knight without a blacksmith or more precisely without the attack upgrade to get the kill. French do get it for free. So once you drop your blacksmith, you will be able to get double taps on villagers if you get the successful charge in if the opponent doesn't have textiles, but Beastie, he went for textiles early, so his villagers will be safe from that early night harassment. It will take quite a lot of effort oh. from B to get a kill. I actually don't mind what B is doing now that I see it. Like the blacksmith makes sense if your opponent it has an ability to like play mid-map, but so far Beastie hasn't built a single stable. He's only pushing spears. So instead of B investing a blacksmith, he's gonna invest in greed. He's going for a secondary TC, possibly even free known B. And if BC continues this path of non-aggression, B gets away with it completely. Yeah, for now, it looks like Beastie is not putting up that much aggression over here on a B, and B is going to go very aggressive at the town center, securing that pocket eco. This could be a great spot, because look at this. This is a trio of resources, a forest, a gold mm -hmm. mine. No, he's going for a sacred site. Oh, he's got the ball. He's got the TC ball. He does this, like, he does this so much with different sieves. Uh, the only people I've seen do it with the French so far has been him and the Muslim. He was one of the first people regularly doing this, actually. I remember uh, over a month, possibly two months ago. Glad to see it making a return to his arsenal. It's been missing for too long. Yeah, and one of the things here is that not only are you securing the board, you're also securing the sacred site, which is something that we have started to see from players like Lucifer and Vordix, I do believe, dropping town centers on the sacred sites. And obviously, those will be exposed in the long run, but at the early period of this Feudal Age combat, it is going to prevent the opponent from walling in the sacred sites or even contesting it. So, for now, B can secure or at least prevent Beastie from taking one of the three sacred sites, plus, of course, get himself a second town center and also work on that boar. That's a very nice uh, three for one over there for B. Absolutely. And this is one of the interesting balance points around a lot of these maps. I find quite frequently at least one of the boars gets located close to the sacred site. So you're somewhat encouraged to play towards it for gains as well as denial against the Delhi. I think this is a big switch up we've seen out of high level players, which is up their game against the Civ that felt very oppressive originally. We saw it yesterday in the Kazwa Zertan series, where as a Mongol, he played for that ball and consequently by doing so, blocked out his opponent's ability to get a sacred site cap. And you gotta play a little riskier than usual here with the French, simply because, as you said, the opponent has a very oppressive civilization. A civilization that is very dangerous in that early mid-game part of the game. You need to do everything you can to buffer up against that, because if this game goes long, the French have the upper hand. It's a little risky of a choice here from B to do the things that he's doing right now, but no risk it, no biscuit. He needs to play risky here, and it's gonna be essentially high risk, high reward, if he is able to capitalize on this as he plans to do, then he's going to survive early game and he's going to be well set up against uh, the Delhi Sultanate come minute 20. Say no more, Lytical. You have me on board as a Brit once you said Biscuit. That's Ouch. Not optimal. Scholar's going down for free. BC will at least discover the secondary TC, but yet to have enough troops to deal with it. And keep in mind, behind this line of knights, now archers are coming out from B. So BC, if he ever tries to contest this TC, it's going to be a hard-fought battle that could end badly. Best choice instead might be this, a wraparound into the food department, B, caught building up the static defenses that he probably already should have had. 
Yeah, you, you often point this out when we're talking about the French. The French really dislike to make these proactive towers. They usually operate with reactive towers, but it's usually too late and it is going to cost the villager here for B. Not the end of the world, but it's definitely something that could have been avoided. Mm -hmm. I feel like reactive is always a good name for it as well, because you know it almost sounds like a reactor, right? Something like radiation poisoning, which is, is actually accurate because it poisons the economical well. You end up trying to build something up that is going to protect something, but half of what it would have originally is probably dead by the time you get it up. Um, that's why I always like to have them retrospectively in place. I think that's where scouting is very important. Scouting that is very limited on both sides, keep in mind, because both B and BC only have one scout now. They lost the second one at some point, so they don't have that extra layer of heads up on where these assaults are coming from. And you don't want to spend your production time for either player on making a new scout. You want to have as much army out there as possible. Horsemen, knights, so you're not going to replace those scouts anytime soon. As you said, the best way for BC to play this one is to go for raids because he's got the numerical advantage in the cavalry department. Mm -hmm. And the cavalry can just peel off on their own. Like the spears aren't fundamental to this plan of raiding. That's the power of cavalry. You know, you can actually dictate the pace, especially with horsemen. So awkwardly for B, whenever he wants to react, even if he reacts with the knights, they're going to be delayed. And if they do arrive, they can't catch their targets. Really, BC kind of dictates the pace. And right now, he dictates his fight. The body block is coming out. Horsemen body block him off. Spearman come around the other side. Big mistakes made by B. Just about makes it out, though. He dodges a bullet here big time. He was completely surrounded by a swarm of Dali Spearmen and Horsemen out there. Did not end up losing a single knight though, so crisis averted. Mm -hmm. That could have been a complete devastation to his army. He keeps all of them alive, so he's going to have the window to heal them back up, luckily for him. And this is what makes Horsemen the staple element in the aggression for the this stage in the game. You know, I mentioned a few things. Their ability to dictate where they take a fight, to run away. Now you see another element. Their ability to body block. Body blocking is still, for the longest period of time, been an underrated element of Age of Empires 4 because it feels so clunky. But if there's something I can highlight that people have gotten better at doing in the last two to three weeks outside of outpost placements, it is most definitely body blocking. Spearman for I now. Oh, this could be dangerous. That town center is not the starting TC. It has around 2000 HP only. And you have enough scholars over here to heal. So taking this down is going to be difficult. And this is why yep. this expansion TC is more than risky here for B. B has to fight. There's so many spearmen. The stealth forest can work against him potentially. Yeah. Being chased away for the moment. But able to get repairs out. Nice play by B there. Hidden as well. But the the vision isn't given over. Oh, BC. the wraparound on the archers, though. This Religious, is still risky. Religious need to get back in. They're returning over. Sniping a few out because the Skulls aren't in position to optimally heal everything. But as you said, the archer being pinched back. B still having 16 in the field. Needs to act fast, though. 1,200 HP remaining. Soon to be none. They'll just have to pull out. Sight on fire, but able to be repaired. And now the horseman gap closing on top of those archers, trying oh, to get behind them so around. they cannot retreat away from them. There's a spear pursuing in the meantime. The knight's not able to fight, not able to get a charge out. And BC with a nice branch off here will split up some spearmen, head back towards the TC, and now return with the horseman as well. And the villagers are still stuck inside here. They could not repair almost at all here. And you see now the archers are lagging behind. This is the problem here. The archers take so much time to get here again. And this leaves a window for BC to once again oh, try to set the TC on fire. But the repairs are once again there. Like, B is playing him like a fiddle right now. Beastie, he's not getting the better side of this because the economy is still growing for B at home. He's not being raided on both locations. And as a result, Beastie just has to commit to the fight now. Goes in with a horseman, doubles down onto the archers and wipes them out. The knights can't run away anymore. And suddenly he's done it. Beastie gets the fight he's been looking for. He's relentless in his pursuit of the royal army. Yeah, B definitely felt like there was blood in the water there. He realized that he needs to fight this because eventually he's going to lose that town center. And now, as you pointed out, both hunts on the same side. Suddenly, B not only has just lost his entire army almost, he's also now being cut off from food. He's got the economical oh, my advantage, my but Beastie is also going into Castle Age here with a massive army Sorry. lead on his favor. And soon it could be an eco lead. Like the amount, uh, yeah, the amount of village you can see, they just run off like, no, not us. Not us, my lord. We won't die for that. But plenty of people will. Three more villages waiting inside here to wait their fate. More villages over near the TC that are not going to be safe because he hasn't repaired it fully yet. And there's enough raiders left to finish it off, but it seems BC is going to back away. He needs to be careful about this, though. He's going to sacrifice the skulls on the exit, but remember, tech up is coming through and villagers? upgrades will follow soon. 
<laughs> Where are they off to? <laughs> yep. A little bit of a confusion out there. Now, luckily for B, he's still up by 14 villagers. The problem is that this is going to be offset in a blink of an eye by Beastie, who will be working his way towards what will be four, potentially five relics here. So that eco is going to vanish and B is nowhere close to Castle Age. The French love oh, to God. spend time in feudal, but this is not an optimal feudal state for them. Yeah, you know, like optimal feudal state probably doesn't involve only eight knights and 11 archers. No, the French want to be dictating pace. When you look at the military pop cap, you can really see the story. We talked about this in the pregame. It's quality versus quantity. Right now, uh, if you're going to try to tell me I'm paying $20 more for this French army, like I, I'm going to refund it, buddy. That ain't quality at all. Well, the quality is there. It's just the fact that they are being outnumbered very heavily now. And once again, Town Center leaves or left to expose, rather. Archer is only to help out here. You could get a surround here if you're Beastie. Beast is playing this one very carefully. I think he could go a lot more aggro than what he's doing right now. It's just the fact that he knows he's ahead, so he's playing this one safe. B is so scared right now. Like, he could have, but he's like, no, I'm not going to risk it. This is looking really bad as it is. Beastie <laughs> will drop the relic. Hands up. He's like, I surrender. <laughs> <laughs> he almost gets away. <laughs> Oh my god, if he had lived from that, like, he just actually, he's like, okay, yeah, he's unarmed, guys, we can't hurt him. Uh, but behind this one, he's gonna have the other relics here, and the problem for B is that he's not putting up any aggression against the eco of Beastie, and while it takes a lot of time for Adeli to get those castle-age upgrades in, we are getting closer and closer to the domain of veteran horsemen and veteran spearmen. Mm -hmm. And also keep in mind the swiftness, herbal medicine. Like there's so many layers to this. And you see there's layers that are going to start to ramp up. When swiftness comes through, the rest of the relics are going to be hoovered up by the giant deli. Hoover, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to sponsor Dyson in this situation. But they might be Dyson. I mean, it's sucking, but not in a bad way here. Because he's sucking everything off the map that B wants. That B has to look forward to. And now B, his only choice is to commit to a sacred site to try and slow things down in some way. <laughs> there, yeah, there's that <laughs> Dyson I was talking about. <laughs> oh, classic beastie play. Grab the resources while you can. Could leave a couple of villagers exposed over here. And do keep in mind that there is still 21 villagers lead for B. And he is slowly getting closer to Castle Age. Don't get mistaken, his situation is still looking grim. But it's not like B has completely lost this game just yet. No, he has rebuilt the night line now, up to 15. This is good. He's getting to a stabilization point to think about Castle, but if he loses the army this time, they'll have to double down, and that, that feels like you're approaching GG with Elephants now starting to arrive as well. The Clash comes out, Spearman body blocked by their own Lancers and Horsemen, but the Archers are going to be exposed. B unwilling to take the fight, retreats away, but if he retreats any further, his economy is going to be exposed. The wraparound again, Beastie QE once again with the body blocks, forcing him to fight, forcing him to stand his ground and die as he does so. Spearman overwhelmed the Knights, barely any remaining the bling of an eye already going down to nine archers shrinking fast behind this the elephant reign is supreme beastie might lose the army but the bigger detail is b losing his while still being an age behind exactly it looks decent here for b if you just take a look at the number of units lost but if you consider the fact that this is everything that b had with no fallback option it is much much more painful to take a look at scholars are gone horsemen spearmen are gone but the elephants are standing strong and that is going to be enough for beastie to buffer this up and look at his resource bank he's sitting on 1800 food it's going to be much, much easier for him to replenish that army than it is for B, who, as you said, is still lagging behind by an age. Now, he does at least have a big economy coming out. We have to remember, at the end of the day, B did keep that town center alive, but the resources he's getting from those areas become scarce. They become limited. And another big issue we're noticing here is he has limited space to work with, and that space is now going to be absorbed for farmlands, an exposure point, considering that Beastie is building lances. Indeed, and you just don't have a single bit of wall set up over here for B. His base is going to be raidable, and you're going to have to focus all your attention towards those elephants, because we have seen in the previous game how difficult they are to stop, which will leave Beastie's options open when it comes to detaching his Lancers and just raiding these exposed farmlands oh, on the left. Oh, little oh, castle homie. drop coming in. Woo. He says, B, I hear you're having problems getting a castle. <laughs> oh, you want the age? I'm sorry, I can only offer you the building. Let me find a good spot for it. <laughs> Look at that placement! Starts to build it up. Oh, in the a little well. ballsy, the actually. The Could be a lot ballsier than we thought. He's building it up. 
Are there enough archers here? Not if they target the scholars. They can't kill anything. Textiles plus scholars <laughs> equals oh. Niet. B has to walk away. Oh, that is a heartbreaker for him. He's going to lose the town center. He could also have his gold mine exposed here. And he tried his best, tried to focus down the scholars, but it's simply insufficient firepower because the scholars reign supreme with their ability to heal, he heal each other. Also, no chance to pick up those villagers with the archers. And you are going to be sitting at almost 100 villagers if you're B, but you are going to be cornered. All right, it, it's good. It's good. We got Core as the observer. Then he can run us through how cornered works. And then if, uh, if, if Core is there a way out of a corner for French? He doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah, no, I, like, no, no. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. It's not pretty. Because like, here's the other thing, right? People are probably wondering right now, like, why didn't he just snipe scholars there? Those scholars had 130 HP, and we have to remember that B doesn't have castle age archers. He had about 16 feudal age archers. Even at their six damage value, that's not enough to one hit scholars. And that's why this just doesn't work. Herbal medicine is there. Swiftness is coming soon. These lads dictate the entire flow of this game right now. Not even static defenses can protect you because all you can get them is arrow slits. But don't worry, if you want big defenses, BC is once again making a generous donation to B's base with his second castle. He doubles down on this location over here. He's going to deny the gold mine. And what's even more concerning is that he's going to deny those precious farmlands even one of the forests that B has to work with. On the bright side of things, B is going into Castle H here and he's mining stone himself. He might be able to afford defensive castle and slow this down. The question is, what will remain out of his army by the time he does that? Oh. I mean, th those farmlands look pretty damn ugly right now. I, I don't know if wheat grows quicker with blood, but I guess we're going to find out in this situation. There's plenty of French blood being spilt here. Has to retreat fully to the condensed space and the limited space up there. Elephants are on the way, Lancer line is building up, and Beastie is still gathering stone. If you think this is the final keep, you'd be dead wrong. <laughs> it's far from being the final, and honestly, if you look at those resources for Beastie, for a long time I thought it's just Miss Macro, because like he was floating a tremendous amount of food. But no, like, now if you look at those resources, it seems to be with intent. He wants to go into Imperial, which as crazy as it I sounds like, might be the game plan. Like, it's so weird, right? <laughs> I didn't want to say it, like, because it seems odd, but, like, realistically, in this situation, keeps are doing enough. B is so far behind that BC sees an opportunity to stay ahead. Like, where's B's recovery point here? It's getting Imperial. If you're already parked there for what will probably be eight to ten minutes, then you actually get to play Delhi Imperial for once in the history of competitive AoE 4. Yeah, indeed. And the key thing here for Beastly is that he doesn't need more units on the battlefield. He's already winning the battle, but he's setting himself up long term. He could say, okay, I'm going to commit to this one. He could say, I'm essentially all inning this with all the resources being put to the battlefield and I just want to win the game right now. But that's not Beastly's playstyle. Beastly's playstyle is to set himself up in the long term. He says, okay, what I have right now is sufficient to do a respectable amount of damage, and I want to make sure that I'm not playing an all-in style game here. I will set myself up long-term. I will go into Imperial and once again, stay one step ahead compared to my opponent. And if you had any doubts, that's what he's doing. Just think about the fact he was taking berries from outside of B's base. He's taking stone. He's taking more lad. He'll take this gold as well. Thank you for warming up and softening <laughs> the rocks. We'll get the gold nuggets out of there. Thank you very much. And he'll even do it quickly soon because remember, BC is over halfway to village fortresses. Engagement in the meantime, knights wrap around. Two elephants are going to get pinched, but there's the heels. Is it and enough the though? Like, the, those royal knights will survive elephant. for long as well. Yeah, here's the problem, Lucor. That castle's complete. So, you know, it was enough to kill an elephant. It's not enough to kill a keep. It's not enough to kill a keep, but at least you slow this down. Oh, this is painful oh, for B, God. though. Scratch everything. For a moment, I Look thought that B, if he cleans this army up, he's going to have a chance to counterattack and potentially damage Beastly's eco. Nope. No, Look it's, it's not going to be a thing. He's the one losing and villagers. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. And village forces are on the way. I don't know hey, if there's a recovery arc real. anymore for B. I mean, the, the only the only thing that, that excites me about B staying in this game is we, we might end up seeing, like, Delhi Imperial <laughs> for the first time in a very is long time. Is that something that you would call exciting? It never happens. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's exciting. It's just the fact it never happens. 
I think some people are happy to see elephants winning. I mean, so far, this whole day has just been elephants OP please nerf, because this is when nobody two, ga two games in a row, in fact, where elephants have just dictated everything in the end. You know what else is OP? Five relics and three sacred sites with a deli, because that's what Beastie has. He's got <laughs> almost 1,300 gold per minute, and I would bet a lot of money on the fact that most of that is passive gold income. I don't think Beast is more than five gold miners. Uh, so he'll have 450 gold from Sacred Sides and then 500. So I, he would probably have like, what, six, seven villages? Um, pretty decent guess, I must say. Yeah, it, I think it comes down to the efficiencies. And yeah, he got both levels. Of, okay, I'm going to stop being the nerd again. That's your job, Lidacore. Be shiny, man. <laughs> Uh, B, he's trying to build up a force here. You see, he's at 17 Royal Knights. He also has Royal Bloodlines. The problem is, as you said, that B is just staying one step ahead, and there is no longer an equal lead here for B, and he was building towards that. His win condition is maintaining an equal lead, and he wasn't able to accomplish that. Oh, Knights on the right side, though. Look at those blue dots. This Big might raid. be B's recovery arc. Raiden in. He gets in. BC's like, what do you mean? We definitely built these walls up to order on time the job wasn't late shut up you don't know anything goes deeper it's gonna be chased though elephant trying to cut him off it's like okay this is the cop in the car <laughs> while everyone else is running on foot like i'll cut him off just keep chasing him backside though can he really do enough is the question mark for me village of fortresses has to be completing soon at which stage 10 villagers dying here doesn't kill beastie at all yeah not at all in fact that is just 20 seconds away here idle time is also going to be a key factor but for B, as you said, trading knights to villagers here is not a good trade anymore, especially knowing the fact that he has almost just four minutes left to go until he needs to decap a sacred site, and looks like the knights are just gonna get cleaned up. He's tapping out of this GG. one. He probably was just typing GG at that time when he saw those knights fighting. Maybe yeah, like, you guys doesn't... command yourselves. I'm done with you. Like, I... <laughs> this game, man, I... <laughs> We don't get to see Delhi that frequently at the moment. And some people have been asking for buffs, but I, I don't know. What do you think? I feel like they're, they're doing all right. They're doing all right from what I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can agree with you on this one. As you said, it's the Delhi power being unlocked in that late Feudal Age. Um, and if you think about the fact that for a long, long time, B was successfully dying one of the sacred sites, this wasn't even a three sacred site Delhi for most of the game. This was two sacred sites, but still, the Castlage timing advantage, then Beastie being able to pick up all those relics, and ultimately the fact that, to a certain extent, B gambled with that forward town center. And that gamble, yeah. at the beginning, paid off, but ultimately, he lost that town center because Beastie was able to build up a force sufficient enough to take that forward position down, and from that point on, B was just unable to maintain an equal lead compared to Beastie.